Hello, everyone. Welcome to the February 18th, 2021 uh, Open edX Community Meetup. We have a few bits of business to cover before we get started. Uh, the Open edX Community has a code of conduct which covers all of our interactions, uh, whether online here in a meetup, in Slack, in discourse, on a mailing list. We don't have any mailing lists anymore. Uh, in pull request comments, wherever you interact with people in the Open edX community, uh, those interactions are covered by our, our code of conduct. Uh, if at any time during your experiences in the Open edX community, you feel like you cannot be happy and productive because of those interactions, please get in touch with us to help let us fix it for you. Uh, we want to make sure that the community is functioning well and the code of conduct is a, a key part of doing that. Uh, a lot of our uh, Non-face-to-face -face interactions are in discourse these days at discuss.openedx.org. It's a discussion forum with a number of different categories, uh, educators, uh, DevOps help, uh, marketing working group, all sorts of things are happening there. So however it is that you want to be involved in the community, you can probably find people to talk to about it in the discourse forum. And we have a Slack workspace for uh, synchronous communications. It's not face-to-face, -face, but you can have a, a quick turnaround chat with people in the Slack workspace if, if you can meet them there. So join the Slack workspace, uh, find us in discourse. Uh, there are links going into uh, the chat here in Zoom. I'll be posting links in the uh, wiki page about this event uh, when it's all done. Uh, um, you can also find us in social media. So we have a blog, we have a Twitter account, we have a Facebook group, and a LinkedIn group. And so whichever of those um, social media tools appeals to you, uh, you've got a place to go to find other Open edX people uh, using those media. Um, before we get to our speaker, I wanted to do just a really quick uh, look back at uh, 2020 and a little bit of look forward to 2021. And by the way, if anyone has any questions or, or wants to make a comment, you can either unmute and say it or, or put it in the chat and I will, I'll try to notice that while I'm speaking. Uh, so a few highlights from 2020. Um, first, we had what we started a program we call the core committers, which is the start of us uh, giving people in the community more rights to merge changes into the code base directly. Um, we are always interested, as an open source project, we're always interested in getting contributions from outside of edX into the code base. And we know that review by edX and edX's attention has been a bottleneck to that process. The core committer program is a way that we're trying to loosen up that bottleneck and make the community more able to uh, steer the code that they depend upon. So that got started in June. It's been going very well. Uh, we're going to be growing it in 2021. Um, so look for more information about that. In October, we had a roadmap workshop, which again was inviting the community in to help steer the direction of the software. What, what features and uh, capabilities are most important? How should we prioritize our work? Um, we hope to do more of those in 2021. We had two community releases of the software. Um, so uh, Juniper came out on June 9th, Koa came out on December 9th. We are um, working hard to produce the community releases of the OpenEdX software on a disciplined six month schedule. And what's gonna be happening in 2021 is we will have both Lilac and Maple. Um, if you if you don't know those terms, we named the releases alphabetically after trees. So we had Juniper and Koa, we're going to be having Lilac and Meeple. A, a good deal of the work for do, building those releases came from the build test release working group, which uh, sort of got formally kicked off just at the beginning of 2020 and has really gained a lot of momentum um, and maturity. We've got more disciplined processes, we've got more people involved. Um, we're trying to be a serious engineering effort within the community, um, not just individual contributors uh, making code contributions, but uh, steering the releases and overseeing those releases. Um, 
and it's going very well. I'm very, I'm very pleased by the progress. If you are interested at all in that work, come and join us. Another working group that got started in 2020 was the marketing working group. Um, and all these working groups, let me just step back for a moment and, and say that the community strategy is that there are things about uh, open edX that are important to edX itself. Namely, it's the software that edX runs. So we care a great deal about the software and we are experts at that software. And then there are parts of open edX that are not as important directly to the edX business. Um, open edX, does not bring a lot of money into edX. So marketing open edX is not crucial to the edX business, but it is crucial to the community's business. So we wanna give more authority and autonomy to the community about how to market open edX um, and frankly responsibility. So we've got the openedX.org website. Uh, it could use some attention. So the marketing working group is pulling together to think about what that site needs and to give it what it needs. And for example, there's now a dynamic benefits matrix page on the open edX site that was built by the marketing working group and is now part of that site to help people understand what the open edX platform does and why they might want to use it. Um, so that's a really exciting thing. Both the build test release working group and the marketing working group are a recognition by edX that more autonomy and authority in the community for the things that matter most to the community are the, is the best way to divide up the work. And again, there are links there about the marketing working group. I'll put the links in, uh, in the wiki page once this recording is done. Uh, if you wanna get involved, you can go look at the discussion in the discourse forum and the blog post that reviews what the marketing working group did in 2020. Um, a big thing that happened at edX in 2020 is that we rebranded. You'll notice that we have new logos. Um, uh, the old logo, uh, very quickly looked extremely old. As soon as we had our new logo, uh, I couldn't quite believe that we'd had the old logo as long as we had. The new logo is great, it's dynamic, it's, it's got energy, uh, it looks modern. I'm very excited about the rebranding. Um, and of course, in 2020, we had a number of these community meetups and there's a link there for past videos if you wanna go and see what other people had talked about um, in 2020. And I'm sure that there's things that I'm leaving out of this overview um, this is what came to mind uh, yesterday as I was preparing these slides. Um, the big story is I'm very pleased by the growth of the community and the growth of the effort by the community to benefit the community. Um, because that's really what an open source project should be about is the people who use the software help to create and promote and uh, extend the software. So that's, that's great. And as I said in 2020, um, basically what we're going to do is more of the same. I don't, I didn't want to put huge, you know, quantitative predictions on this slide because predicting the future is a dangerous game, but 2020 was great energy and huge amounts of collaboration. Um, not just more collaboration, but new styles of collaboration. And then we're going to continue that in 2021 and it will help. You are all invited to be part of that. And I look forward to hearing your ideas about how we can do it better. Um, and I'll just underscore again, the working groups in particular are a really good way to build a nexus of energy uh, and authority within the community to get things done. Right now we have the BTR build test release working group that's overseeing the releases and the marketing working group, but maybe there's other things that we could be doing together. Um, and by the way, the marketing working group, one of the things they've taken on is figuring out, you know, what does the word conference on 2021, how do those two words go together? And it's a big question, uh, but they're, they're taking it on and it's exciting to see what's gonna happen. So working groups are community driven, they're community focused, and we'd like to have more of them. So if there's something you'd like to see happen in the community, get in touch, let's see what we can make happen. All right, that's, that's enough of my cheerleading. Uh, I am very pleased that everyone is here. You are just being here, you are part of the community making things happen. It's very exciting to me personally to see, to see that kind of energy. Now, the main feature for today, uh, we have our speaker, and I'm probably going to mispronounce his name, but Javier is here to uh, tell us about Graspway, what Graspway is, and why Graspway chose to use the OpenEdX platform uh, as part of their offering. Um, Javier, Javier, are you ready to take over? Yes. Yes, yeah, so I'll stop sharing.
you should be able to kick in. Looks good. So are you uh, seeing my screen right now? Yep, looks great. So first, uh, my congratulations yeah. about about the all the challenges uh, uh, being related to the open community because I, I know very deeply the difficulties of uh, managing an open community uh, as well. I, I, I was in the, in the late 19s uh, war uh, on top of Linux uh, uh, war uh, uh, between Linux and, and and Microsoft, and you remember, remember very funny days, and and, and I, I was a contributor in, in Debian project in the 19s and in the in the next year, and it's very difficult to, to manage an open community, very very difficult, but it's very beautiful as well, and very grateful. So well, um, hello everyone, and thank you very much for for being here and. Um, we are very happy to share with you today a few minutes to talk about Crossway and why we choose the Open Index platform to, to build it. Um, well, first of all, what does Crossway mean? That is uh, the, the, the first uh, question that the people maybe uh, keep in mind. Um, well, it, it comes from the next sentence. It's uh, grasp the knowledge and follow your way. It's so simple. But it's very deep, deep, and very it's very deep of, uh, about learning, about understanding. And I love, for example, the the very basis of, about the learning that the uh, Richard Feynman follows uh, to learn about about issues, about knowledge. You know? And it's always grasp the knowledge. It's about understanding and follow your way. So. This is the first point here, but the, the next is, well, Crossway is uh, the ITECH powered by Open Systemas. Open Systemas is a company from uh, Spain um, with the objective of building an all around product uh, marketplace in order to build uh, the driven online living processes and which improves develop the skills and knowledge of people and organizations. But this is how, as also the same, the, the name of the ITECH online training product developed by Open Systemas since uh, 2014, approximately, based on the experience with thousands of users, uh, resulting from their integration of highly successfully open source products, strongly based on data and learning analysis. Um, a large number of organizations already use uh, Open Index uh, with the Grassway and the technological basis of uh, their in-company training or online courses catalogs. So as well, additionally, we have collaborated in important meeting from which we have learned a lot. Um, we have a very good partner relationship with uh, Microsoft and OpenEx for product improvement and business development. Um, and it is has to solve some aspect related to the fundamental problem of training. That is something that I, I love to explain, but the, because the, the people uh, usually uh, uh, forget the, this, this important point, a simple point. But uh, what is the fundamental problem of training? Well, the fundamental problem of, of training is about giving, empowering people with knowledge. So it's a uh, really easy, you know, it's super easy, it seems. But because this is only one row, one arrow, it's, 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 very, it's, very, it's very easy, you know, but no. But not why it's easy, easy, okay? Because the training process uh, tends to behave like a complex system. It's a dynamic system, a mathematical system, it's a complex system. It's a dynamic system with a huge number of independent elements interacting with each other locally to achieve a, a definite training objectives and whose individual or collective behavior is very difficult to predict. And it's, be, be, it's because uh, 
it has a lot of independence elements in the in the system uh, users uh, i know learners teachers uh, tutors uh, as um, block of training uh, content techno technological components software components interaction between element is local i mean local is limited to training activities like courses training paths and user uh, interacting between between uh, them users and software component interacting each other and technological components software components interacting with block of training components and it's really uh, uh, very complex and the last one is because the behavior is very difficult to predict i mean here for example the, the drop up the dropout rate is very difficult to, to predict the speed of the progress is difficult to predict and for example detect uh, anomalies or fraud is very difficult and very important um, right now um, uh, after the the year we have uh, from ham um, because the companies are and universities are looking for uh, methods or technical uh, solutions to detect anomaly around fraud evaluations so it's not it's not easy at all um, the problem is uh, the, the, the problem solution is a revolution right now but this this revolution sincerely is a uh, one revolution for 150 years okay because it begins for example with distant education uh, in the in the 18th century um, because uh, some technologies, disruptive technologies, uh, becomes in, in that uh, railway, post mail, telephone, radio, and TV, and then e-learning in the in the middle of the 19th uh, at the beginning of this uh, uh, century, because some uh, very important technologies arise, for example, the World Wide Web and Linux and the open source revolution. The next one, uh, MOOCs. Uh, in the last uh, 12, uh, 13 years, or um, one more year, because the cloud and um, because the internet access for everyone. And the last one uh, is the data driven online learning, because science now to the future. Um, because the big data technologies and the AI and machine learning uh, it for everyone. And this uh, line uh, is the experience of uh, the op uh, from Open Systemas, the, the company behind the, the product, and our vision on the, 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 the basis of Grassway is, is this one. So, Open System has more than 15 years of experience helping to solve with open software of open source technology, the fundamental problem of living, of training. And I mean, we uh, get some uh, ideas, uh, a lot of feedback, and a lot of uh, learning from mistake and customer requests. I mean, for example, experience with uh, classical or old uh, fashion uh, lean, uh, learning uh, management system like Moodle, Total Learn, Canvas, Nokios, and a lot of feedback about user experience, uh, hard management, uh, need of custom web design, a lot of automatic integration, need for content portability, a lot of uh, reports, poor scalability, high total cost of ownership, services portability, poor reliability. These are a lot of ideas, feedback directly from uh, experience. Um, for example, we need to uh, serve the, the services to big customer, to really small customers. And we had a lot of bad experience and good experience, but with a uh, high cost. Um, this is not the good way to do that. So ideas for a good labeling product. Uh, after all of our previous experience and skills and knowledge, we draw these uh, these ideas. Uh, the platform uh, needs to uh, to be real open source, and I mean real open source because not real open source is near real. 
near of the because it's uh, very complex to analyze uh, license uh, that are near open source but not real open source. I mean, so it's it's you you need to to understand this, this good community and this is difficult because uh, there are a lot of uh, good uh, platform but are not on top of a good community or healthy community, a real open community that it's really important for, for this. With a unified user model, unified data model, and on top of uh, an identity provider or with a good support of an identity provider because it's really important if for university, corporate, corporation, and so on and easy brand and web content management and nice user experience uh, models of stensium a powerful e-commerce course a standard model and a lot of ideas that are very hard in the same uh, uh, bucket because uh, there are a lot of actions but uh, there are not so much uh, a platform that uh, have this uh, this uh, uh, amount of uh, features and we uh, decide after an analysis we decided the platform had to be an integration of a uh, content management system and a learning management system with uh, AP for all the integration and the APA for all the integration no hard integration at all uh, on top of docker and kubernetes because it's important microservices for scalability uh, for portability is very, very important with a unified extension model uh, with some support that is really important for integrations. Uh, with a coherent license model that is the same that the real um, is the following to their real open source model because not all the licenses are good for mixture. So with a coherent license model is a good uh, point here. Uh, following uh, open standards related to the learning uh, wall, for example, score, score support, LAT support, and more. Okay, that's our the uh, choose of, of of standards. And after analysis, we decided the platform had to be, and the winners were um, these uh, guys. Who are these guys? Well, we are going to explain this WordPress and OpenIndex. What is WordPress used for in Grassway? Grassway use uh, WordPress for uh, the homepage and adaption of the look and feel, the design and the edition of the course catalog, the course details, the mark course and my profile. Other pages because it's a it's a standard uh, content management system, and to provide uh, a hard and very robust and very uh, flexible e-commerce functionality uh, with uh, access and 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 to be the door to the access to the control center. I'm going to explain later the what is the control center. Um, what is the open platform used for? Well. All of you guys uh, yeah, uh, already knows the Open Index platform. So, well, it's really great to create course. Studio is uh, lovely and very, um, very flexible and very powerful. Providing students with course content to provide um, activities, problems in, in a course, and a lot of uh, features uh, that are very uh, good in Open Index and not so well in another platforms and another learning management platforms. So it's really good. But Grassway isn't just the combination of WordPress and Open Index platform, no, because we add a third a component here that is needed to uh, to manage all the all the platform. The control center. The control center is the central part, the, the back end to manage users, courses, uh, learning paths, and a lot of uh, functionalities that are not in Open Index uh, directly or it doesn't, it 
uh, WordPress is not the platform for for for, for this, and is needed in a, in a, in a, in a platform. For example, this uh, this feature. For example, the support of an unified single sign-on, uh, unified user management, unif unified course management for a serve dashboard per user role. You can design a new role. Uh, um, uh, shared with this uh, user role uh, a dashboard for for the for the for the function of the of this role in the in the organization for defined processes and objectives uh, that this group of courses that uh, following uh, a defined uh, objective with a linear path builder. Uh, you can group uh, courses, uh, make uh, build a sequence of uh, of uh, courses uh, that are uh, related with a, a kind of trigger or a kind of condition past condition to to uh, jump from one course to the to the following. Uh, for example, the progress um, and an organization hierarchy builder that is needed in. Uh, uh, companies with uh, structure. Um, for example, we have uh, um, a customer of us in the pharma industry that need this uh, hardly because uh, it has. They had um, they had uh, a hierarchy very um, very very defined uh, for uh, multi-level linear data access. You don't need uh, any. Um, Big data, additional big data uh, platform for analyzing the data because we have uh, services, microservices that are continuously gathering the data from open index or from the e commerce and are unifying all the data uh, in the same point to be uh, used. Uh, one data inspector of the silos, uh, you can uh, see in one view all. Are happening in one course or in a, in a, for one student. Um, more things that are a short list of uh, features. Um, I'm going to to tell us the our story of uh, COVID-19 and what happens. Okay. Our pre-COVID-19 situation was something like that. Quite right map. Uh, the all normal, okay. Think of the best with all the details and step by the step, gently. Is that that role, this role, and this is uh, really really gently, okay. But in the same way, a project for a uh, for a uh, for a client was three standard uh, steps: analysis, deployment, and services. Um, in the all normal. It, it was usual uh, three to six months. It, it was normal. It's, it, it's something normal to to do. Okay, so it was uh, our picture. It's uh, a, a kind of picture of us uh, developing the product. It was the, the team. It it has uh, the, the, the appearance of the of the team uh, walking on top of the sand of the of the daily basis. So. The, the, the answer for grassroots to, to solve the fundamental uh, problem of training was infrastructure as a service only for the big companies because, well, three to six months are expensive for small to medium or to, to micro uh, uh, companies or individuals as well. And, well, it, it was normal uh, in the pre COVID situation. And, it happens that COVID-19 and the rabbit hole appears in our road. And you know, the rabbit hole, okay? Something illogical, something strange, a lot of things that are changing. Um, technology is the key of, uh, to everything. It's, a, it's some of the most important uh, things uh, they, we need to, to, to learn from the past year. Is the key to everything: technology, the science, or of the, of the of the collaboration between individuals. We have to change the roles, and everything has changed. So, 
some important ideas uh, that uh, the new COVID-19 scenario was changed uh, where already they are half accelerated. Uh, urging online training needs of, of organization was really important, not, not the, the best. The best is not important, it's the, what, what I need right now, I need the next month, the next two months, the next three months, but I, I don't know exactly what I'm going to be or to, uh, uh, to, to get in, 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 in six months or in one year or two years. It's impossible to, to predict. And be practical and be empathetic. It's really important to talk, to, uh, to talk with the people, to learn, to, to hear the needs and to take, uh, to take the, the ideas. So is our picture right now. It's, uh, this is uh, this dog is my team right now. They're developing day by day the, the, the product and the service and, and getting a rhythm and more rhythm of the development. And the answer for grass, from Grassway was the developing of the, to the chain of our minds and the chain of the product to, to one uh, deployment of three to six months in the infrastructure of the of the customer of uh, managed managed by by us to uh, to build uh, and sell service uh, and a software as a service or platform as a service for everyone. This is simple and this is all the one slide, but it's really 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 difficult to change the mind of uh, the team, the change the mind of the objectives or uh, from uh, open systems and to choose to take the 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 the, the decisions uh, to to get this and to get uh, uh, deployments or activation of the services in minutes, not in days or months. That is very difficult to take this uh, chain to get this one one web with a Sigma process, very easy to do, and a cloud manager uh, to get all the management of the owner of, uh, of the account to uh, allow to create multiple sites uh, per account. And I mean site, uh, the three parts of the systems, WordPress, uh, Control Center, and Open Index. Uh, to allow one account to get uh, multiple organization uh, under the account. For example, I can uh, create uh, one account and under this account create multiple organization, multiple multiple companies, and these companies uh, uh, with different uh, amount of sites. Uh, and independence with uh, all the data isolated and with uh, unified site management. This is this picture um, with the multi tenant in, in software as a service. You can uh, choose this model or choose one site in a private tenant with uh, uh, platform as a service in your own. Um, uh, tenant, and it's because uh, some um, some initiative of uh, lifting requires uh, some integration, external integrations, ad hoc developments, some extensions, or hard development of the of, on top of, for example, uh, WordPress. That in a in a model of multi tenant is impossible to to allow. To all the customers, and this is uh, the um, some screens of the of the system uh, showing the uh, cloud manager with uh, one company with uh, several sites. The details of a, of one site to uh, configure the um, to set up the the site. Uh, one site with the three parts, the WordPress. That is the web uh, to to publish the the course catalog 
open index and the control panel all uh, with uh, a unified model to, to, to manage all the system. So, well, this is uh, all our presentation and we love to, to get some ideas, some uh, comments from, from you guys. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it, if people have questions, uh, type them in the chat or just unmute and ask them. Um, I have I have a question. I, one of your slides, you mentioned that it was important for the solution to be real open source. Yes. And I was wondering what you meant by that. Okay, real open source is about uh, a current uh, license model. Uh, the parts of the different, for example, we are using um, uh, open index and open index uh, follows uh, <clears throat> follows a license model uh, well designed it. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, studio has uh, a license and it's the same that the LMS and it does not seek any other license, for example, mixing GPL uh, three with GPL two and MIT and Apache because it's not good for for work altogether. So I mean, um, for example, the, we are mixing uh, WordPress and uh, our own development, uh, into integrating all the all the system using an APE that it's uh, allowed if you use a uh, uh, one, uh, for example, uh, GPL uh, V3 is not good for all the situation in this uh, scenario. So it's uh, very important to choose the right set of uh, license uh, you are going to use. Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, as uh, in, the, in the same way, open real, uh, real open source uh, related to the community. Uh, mm -hmm. the openness of the community and uh, not only the the rules uh, rating in the web page or uh, the the soul of the community and how are the procedures or the openness of the community to, to collaborate right that yeah that is important um i'm going to keep going with questions unless someone has one and wants to jump in. I have one yeah. to alternate. <laughs> OK. So hi, Javier. Thanks Thanks for, for the presentation. Um, I'm Adolfo. I'm from OpenCraft. Uh, my question is, you offer software as a service and platform as a service. Yes. Um, how, how does that work behind the scenes? A, a hint you gave is that uh, the platform as a service you you allow customizing the platform is that right yes whereas yes. the multi-tenant version you don't um, yes yes it, it's it's something difficult um it's something difficult to to allow all the um, all the integrations to all the developments or all the extensions for example if uh, one customer needs uh, an a specific X block or a custom X block is not possible to allow all the people in a multi tenant model to to do that because it's uh, something really complex. You can manage this uh, one by one, uh, getting the the ask uh, or the request, um, analyzing, um, uh, serving to all the customers in the multi tenant model. But it's something dangerous because it's. Oh, okay, so, so you 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 probably price the the different uh, offerings accordingly, right? Uh, I can ask you. I'm a, I'm in a software as a service multi-tenant model. I can ask you for an X block, and you can say, yeah, maybe you will see if it works for everybody, or go to the platform as a service where we can install it yes. for you. Is that how it yes. works? Yes. Yeah, okay. And, and the same, uh, it, it works in the same way with uh, 
with uh, WordPress. WordPress has a lot of plugins, a lot of themes, a lot of extensions, and a lot of uh, dangers related to the plugins and model. So you need to analyze uh, the security problems, the stability problems, and then decide if you uh, are going to integrate this uh, extension or not. Sounds good, thanks. Thank you. Uh, there's a question in the chat. Does your approach use WooCommerce for the e-commerce aspect of the site? Can get this uh, in the chat. Well, that's the whole question. Do, do, do you use WooCommerce? That's the yes. Yeah, the we are going. Into, we are using WooCommerce because, well, it's a it's a really good plugin to to power WordPress with e-commerce, mm -hmm. and it has a really good uh, extension model. And it's important for us because uh, it follows a good um, uh, license and current model, model uh, with uh, with uh, WordPress. Okay. So I'm it's, interested. It's, in, hmm? it's important for for us um, that we um, that we use uh, all the extension or all the all the extension of, of the products, if you, we can manage uh, using APA and common lane interface. If the extension is only a kind of wizard or a kind of uh, user interface only allow to, to manage it, we don't have to go in. If we are going, we are not going to use the, the extension. And there's a follow-on question in the chat. Does the WooCommerce also manage the subscriptions? No, we have a, an own a subscription model. Mm -hmm. So I know one, one of the things that many OpenEdX adopters and service providers do is change the front page of sites, right? The, the, the edX.org course catalog pages are not open sourced and the the page front page that you get out of the box with open edX is pretty plain so a lot of people change it um, I'm wondering about do how do people feel about that um, everyone doing it on their own rather than working together on a replacement for the front of the site there was there was an effort at one point to build a shared um, uh, front page, um, but it, I'm not sure it's gained wide ad adoption. I, I, I think it's not only about the technical point here. I, I think I, I, I deeply know the the Django staff and, and the front um, as well. But it's, it's, it's not only a technical point because um, the feedback from our customer is Hey guys, we, we have already have a team of uh, content management or the content creators that it usually use um, WordPress. So do you have WordPress in your platform? Okay. Um, or do you have an integration with uh, one uh, platform of uh, Microsoft or uh, another platform? And you, you need to to go to in this direction because uh, Open Index is not is not a content management system, so it's a specific uh, management system. Mm -hmm. is, is any part of the WordPress integration available as open source for other people to use? Not now, but is the is the our plan in the future? That'd be great. Um, and we are analyzing the, the model and we are analyzing the, not only the business model, the, the business model, uh, in, I, in my opinion, always uh, is a good, uh, uh, it's a good duration to, 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 to publish an, like an open source, uh, these kind of things. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's about the, um, 
what thing you are going to share with the community uh, to help the community to, to grow all together. Yep. Um, it's it's uh, about this. Right. And, and the getting more people to help with a common piece of code so that that code yes. can grow and develop faster. Yes, we developed some, uh, we think, uh, good piece of uh, software, so like, for example, uh, microservices to manage uh, data in real time from open source, from open index to, to a kind of data lake to manage uh, all the data and to press to, to show the data in dashboards and it's a good piece of code um, for example one service to to interact with uh, with wordpress in a in an independent mode with a microservice uh, as well and all is uh, all this uh, built in on with the uh, apis uh, in in a current mo model to interact with the with the ADP and with the, the with the service provider, and all the all the architecture of the of the model is based on an architecture of federation of uh, based on some service providers, ADP, microservices. So it's uh, something that works. Okay. And Mm -hmm. Did you see the the question in the chat about authentication? No, because I, I don't. That's okay. Know That's okay. Just, I'll read it. Chat. That's okay. How is the authentication done between WordPress and Open edX? Well, it's a good question because it's the, the first question we we solve. <laughs> um, we decide uh, not to not to integrate directly any piece of uh, of software, independent software. So we integrate all using uh, an ADP and own ADP, an ADP uh, created by own uh, following the standard SAML. Um, we, um, we manage the, the authentication and authorization using SAML too, uh, between WordPress and OpenEdex and the control center and the external application as well. For example, uh, Activity Directory or Azure Activity Directory or Google Cloud or something like that, for example. Are there, are there any other questions for Javier? No? All right. This is this is very informative. It looks like you've done a great job uh, building a, a comprehensive solution to uh, using Open edX, but also building out around Open edX to provide more capabilities. So it looks really good. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to open sourcing some of these capabilities so that other people in the community can um, get make use of them. Uh, yes. We can, we, so we have some time for open mic questions and answers. Um, if anyone's got other topics they want to discuss, I have a I have a quick one still for Javier. Uh, oh, is the control okay. center a separate piece of software? It's not WordPress. Do I get that right? It's something else. No, no, no. It's, it's a totally separate uh, piece of software, independent. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, is that going to be open sourced someday? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's I I I, I don't I don't, I'm not the good uh, guy to answer this because well I'm a real I hardly open source man and uh, but um, I, I I think this is a good uh, the, the good way to 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 do the things but I understand that we need to sync the business model as well the license model. Uh, until we get this point, okay? It's not well. It's 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 a it's a good decision for for us to do that. I think it's a it's a real win win to all together this, this this step. Okay. Yeah, you could go step by step. Like maybe I, you probably have lots of little pieces of glue. 
that uh, stick all of that together. Uh, like you mentioned, pulling in data from different sources, right? And you yes. find that. Um, I'm just thinking out loud, like you, you could open source just the, the glue that does that and then something else. Anyway, yeah. Uh, no, but, it, but it's a, it's a, it's a simple, uh, it's, it's a simpler uh, architecture in the, in the, in the, in the way that it's, uh, it's all the services are isolated, uh, between each other, um, doing a function. Uh, so it's easy to, um, to publish uh, like, uh, an open source project the separate service uh, step by step okay the hard thing uh, always to this uh, step is to get some kind of uh, documentation that is uh, always a hard point not the the quality of the code but the quality of the code uh, with uh, our team is uh, really good but well you you you, you understand that the, the, the documentation yes, yep. is always Always. Documentation um, and deployment. There are two no, things. The, 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 the deployment is very, very good. And um, with test, uh, unity test and quality test. Um, but the documentation is not enough to, to publish this. The, the simpler uh, pieces of code is, is, is good for, for being published tomorrow. But the, the, the big ones need to, to the more, more quality of the documentation. Um, I don't want to monopolize the chat, but I have a, a question because we're the edX community is dealing with this right now, which is deployment of edX. How do you do it? Do you use edX configuration or Docker files or what? <laughs> deployment of question. open edX. Open <laughs> edX. Sorry. Open, open, open. <laughs> Good question, and is the the maybe the more difficult thing here um, the deployment on the on the on, on the on the cycle of uh, on of analyze uh, all the the quality of the services of the status of the service in in the multi tenant model of the, on in the on the, the private tenant model, um, but we follow the point here uh, always in the same way all is an apa all is an integration using uh, um, not touching all the, always not touching the 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 server or the of the all the remote uh, piece of code and always almost almost always um with a stateless um, uh, thing, and all the the things in in JIT and, and using a coherent development model. That is maybe the, the more difficult challenge to to get was the deployment of all the all the things. You know, to get as microservices open edX is uh, like uh, build a cathedral. So or <laughs> on build a cathedral. So it's really, really difficult, really difficult. Yeah, we know <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, but it's getting there, which is why yeah. I asked. Yeah. So I, yeah. I mentioned at the top of the event, the build test release working group, Adolfo is currently the, the leader of that group and top of mind for him and the group as a whole is how to improve the deployment story for OpenNX to make it easier for more people to, to use the software so that we can spread the mission of educating the world. One of the most important challenges here was to empower the new developers uh, with uh, with an environment um, to, to get really quick the development environment uh, working and it was a big challenge as well yep okay. yep uh, well we're at the top of the hour um i want to thank javier again for for the presentation we had a good discussion about 
technical issues and licensing issues and open source, which is where these test discussions tend to go. Um, thank you all for joining. We'll be doing another one of these in March. In the meantime, please join us in discourse and in Slack. Uh, and go out and educate the world. That's the Open Edx mission. Um, you're all part of it, and I am really excited. Thanks for coming. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you. you. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.